Hello and welcome back everyone from Silverstone. This is round 12 of the Formula 1 World Championship here from the United Kingdom. In my opinion the Silverstone circuit is one of the best in the calendar because uh, you can battle literally everywhere on the track. It has such a good flow and I think it's the best circuit for wheel to wheel racing. So I'm really excited about the race and how chaotic it will be. The rain has arrived to the track. Joe Gratt is on pole, Mingu is next to him on the front row. Five lights on Irin Silverstone and it slides out and we go. Good start for Joe Gratt. Mingu lost the car completely. Lucas Muno goes into second position. Horacio goes around the inside. Mingu lost two position. Meanwhile, Lucas Muno sends it in. They both go over the track with Horacio, but Lucas Muno still challenging Joe Gratt for the race lead. Let's see the turn three. Murno went off the track, this will allow Jogler to sneak past in red, Mingu also struggling a little bit and they crashed with Horacio, he forces uh, the Italian into the gravel, loses out of position, Mingu dropped down to third and then comes Campos, had a really good start ahead of Ignacio Martin Sanchez dropped back a few positions and then also Team Link had a fantastic start already in P7 and uh, Lucas Muno was second position, Mingu in third at Campos, goes way off the track, he Outbreaks in Simons, crashes in the wall, this is terrible stuff for a project Oscar, he will lose a lot of positions with that. And then ahead of them, Ignacio Martin trying to challenge Mingu for third position and the he, oh they crashed a little bit some parts from both cars, I think they're going side by side into course. Mingu has the inside and also Team Ding appearing into action, Mingu slides out, Martin overtook and also Team Ding got past Sanchez, so Team Ding is really flying in the wet right now, but Mingu slides out, he definitely has damage. Uh, from the contact with well, Urasio getting past Rujinko, so regains 8th position at least. And Team Link still trying to go for the move on Ignacio Martin, the saturated space, and Team Link lost the car. Disaster for the Inter World Racing Team was such a nice position, and now he, is, he will be at the back of the pack. And also Urasio closing out to Amis Gianfranco, who messed up really badly. Goes way of the track and this will allow uh, Urasio to get past him and also Rushinko is close at his boxing already. So let's see back the race start again because Lucas Muno get a fantastic start from Sora Rigid, already got past him and gets, got such a nice momentum and uh, just sent it in into the run, went a little bit off the track and that meant Jogret could come back to him. But in the third he just breaked a little bit too late and that was so bad on the outside that he lost the lead uh, because of this. And let's see what happened to Urasio. He is right behind Mingwu. He gets the inside and Mingwu, oh, he lost the car temporarily. And it was such an unlucky moment for Urasio because he was he got wiped out of Mingwu's uh, moment. Let's see Campos what happened, he just braked way too late and crashed the car into the wall, lost like 6 positions with that, had to cut across the whole grass, so it's not a good opening lap for him, as well, dropped down to 10th I believe, lost. And this is the interesting part, because 3 people started on a pit lane and all 3 of them has been disqualified, both now Kukraz and Spirk I believe, because Shazan uh, went to the track but the light was still red and everyone followed him through and all three of them got disqualified unfortunately. We are back while I went Bruno trying to fight back to Joe Gillette uh, and he went off the track so Gillette could lose the lead right here let's see yes he rejoins behind Lucas Bruno so Bruno is back at the front this time Gillette was the one who messed up that corner. But now he's on a fight back to him on the Angar seat. They're going side by side into Stone. No, Gilad backs out of it at the last one. But he gets a better exit through here. But Murro has the inside line into the way she can let it a little bit behind. But brave enough to break later and still holds the lead. But this will be really close. And now uh, Mingu trying to fight back to Gilad. So Martin sends it in. This was slight contact. I think we went off the track. This was unsuccessful overtake. Uh, from the Chinese driver. And this is how Sanchez got past Martin. Morita Spaniard, he lost the car, the same place as Ting Ming, but he just managed to save it. Now a lap on Boric Michel Urasio is attacking uh, Ming Wu. This is a battle for fifth position. He's a little bit behind, but goes for the move in the Brooklands and he's done it very nicely. Urasio moves up into P5. 
Compass is running in 8th position currently in the other Proyecto car, but he goes really fight into Cox goes of the track and what is going on with Jump Frank who is teleported back? Hello the Spaniard, he's having some lag issues again, just like in the other races, yes he's definitely having some issues with Compass going around the outside into Chapel Corner and he's done a beautiful overtake by Gal Campos, but Urazio nice story catching up to Ignacio Martins getting close in the turn one and Martin messed up again just like the same way where Kirat went off the track in a second lap where Murno got past him into the lead and Martin goes off the track and Urazio gets past him because of this the rebellion is not too far back behind from Urasio. Approaching into Sun Urasio went really offline on the bad part of the track, and Martin with better grip gets past him. Urasio lost the car in the wall and he lost the position, but he regained at the opening of this lap. Miva Campos and Gianfranco going wheel to wheel again uh, into Stowe and Campos the same way as Urasio who goes off the racing line. And this could allow Gianfranco to get past him once again. Which happened. Compos is gonna regain the position from him, going side by side into Brooklands Gianfranco again having some connection issues, but he's still ahead a little bit. And Compos sees a gap into uh, Lafield on the inside, but Gianfranco just holds on the position. So they are even at the same. Let's go with Car Campos. He gets a nice slip sim from uh, Gianfranco. Is he gonna send it into Cobbs? Yes. There was light contact, Jump Franco goes off the track, but I think Campos is out of the club racing La Vega. Ga Campos messed up again, I think he went on the grass a little bit again, just like what happened to him at the first lap and they are close. Jump Franco gets a nice exit here, he's still having some lag issues and Campos goes on to the curb with some speed with that. And Jean Franco regains 7th position from him, but oh now he was really slow into the cops corner they're gonna go side by side again into the uh, fast corners and they touch it little bit and jump franco into the wall it's a huge crash for him and that's ended their battle right there marcel is in the pits on third position already in lap 8 the rain has stopped so what's he gonna do he's putting on the intermediate tires so this will be really interesting strategy guys. And after the accident, Gianfranco has put on the sauce, but is really striking. There's too wet, and just couldn't control the car. Ruzinko gets past him. This is too wet. He can't even turn the car. It was a horrible idea to put on the slick tires. Oh my God! Yeah, he can't even turn the car. This is a whole disaster for him. Is Gianfranco, and his race is done, probably. And we have another replay from him, so let's see, he's trying to stay on the racing line, but as soon as he went off the line, just a little bit, there was absolutely no chance for him and just slid out completely. Sanchez drove back to P6, but he's on the better internet tires, Mingu makes a slight mistake and Sanchez says goodbye to the Maestro Mechanics. Uh, Musa Pinto prefer that Mingu trying to fight back to him into stone, no, he just backs out. Uh, at the end, so Sanchez keeps the position. We are on the halfway point, and Joe Grett is in the pit lane for second position. What's he gonna do? It's a long pit stop for the, the Imperial driver, and he's put on the slicks again. Now, this is interesting because it's three laps later than when Gianfranco has put on, so the track dried out a bit more. But is it the right idea? We will see. Meanwhile, his teammate Urasi is also in the pits. So what is gonna be the strategy in the team Italian headquarters? So let's see, Urasio stops on his box and what's he gonna do? He's put on the intermediate tires, now they are on different strategy. This will be very interesting for the race. Which one is gonna pay off? Meanwhile, Campos is also put on the intermediate tires, but he's struggling, Ruzinko still is on the wet. And he passes him, yes, Ruzinko is in 7th position, so Campos is sliding a little bit on the intermediate, so I wonder how the slicks will perform. And Gilad slides off into the wall, as I imagined it was a horrible idea. The same what happened to Gianfranco, I think he will lose 2 positions right there. Sanchez made the right call earlier on, and Urasio uh, is also in a nice position. So let's see what happened to Joe Gilad into Brooklands. 
It breaks a little bit too late and as soon as he went offline the same what happened to jump round but there is zero grip outside and just slides, slides, slides into the wall. And the two teammates right behind now each other and Gillet uh, goes into a pit lane again. Shirley is gonna put on the intermediates but he lost uh, so much time with that it was not a good idea. Meanwhile Campos is trying to get revenge on Rujinko. Uh, gets a nice fix in from him, goes round the outside, remember he's on the intermediate tires and he gets a move down round the outside into so it was a nice move from Campos. Joe Gillette has also put on the intermediate tires but he lost an incredible amount of lap time compared to the others because Urasio now is already uh, on into cops when Gillette is uh, at the earlier corners of the track. And let's see, Lucas Murnau approaches to the pit lane, so he is pitting for a race. Martin stays out for another lap, he will take the lead. But what the Rebellions are gonna do? Because if Murnau uh, makes the right move, he is gonna be in the lead for sure, in a huge gap. So we will see. What are the plans in the Rebellion? Murnau stops. It's a slow pit stop, little bit, and he's put on the slicks. Oh no, this could be a disaster. This truck is still such, still very slippery ahead. He enters back to the truck in third position. So remember, it's two laps later when Joe Gillard made this stop, but I think it's still a little bit too wet. One lap later, Martin is also coming in from the race lead, and this would mean that Sanchez would take the lead and Urasio is challenging Mingwu. Mingwu still hasn't pitted yet. Urasio on the new intermediate tires. Let's see, they are going side by side. Almost Mingwu is a little bit ahead. I don't know if they touched a little bit. Mingwu went off the track. So Urasio uh, overtakes him into fourth position right now. And Murno going really slowly. What's happened to him? So suddenly drop back behind and Urasio is in third position, it will be a second after uh, Martin's pistol but Sanchez takes it and Martin also put on the stick tires all night and he's already struggling to get, even get out of, of the pit lane. So I, 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 I'm not sure what the plans in, uh, in the rebellions but it's surely not the right move because he also can't even turn the car. It's lap 16 but it's still really wet in Silverstone. So let's see what happened to Murna and the Shikin. He break a little bit too late and as soon as he went offline, yes, just like the others, there was no chance for him. Cut across the whole grass, but he went offline again at the second part and he's struggling to turn the car right. And where this, this is the moment where Urasio approaches really fast. And this is Ignacio Martin in Brooklands, he slides off again. It's a huge crash, he lost his fronting. I think this is the worst one. Uh, what we've seen so far and with no fronting with six tires on the bed it will be a hell to get back into the pit lane and uh, yeah his race is completely ruined by now Chongi that is get past him right now and Compass is in the pits and Compass also put on the slick tires ah yeah yeah this could be a disaster for him as well as Sanchez is also uh, in the pace from the race lead, so remember he put Sanchez on the intermediate tires earlier and Martin is upside down, it's an absolute horrible race for the Rebellions he's surely out of the race and let's see what Sanchez will do from the race lead in the Proactor squad so he makes his piece of right now, Michel Urasio takes the lead and Compos has crashed out also the same place where Ignacio Martin even lost his wheel, he's out of the race as well as Sanchez is on the slick tires but he's on the soft instead of the medium but I don't know if it could work for him or not and Mingwu exits the pit lane right now and he's on the intermediate tires uh, unlike the others so let's see what happened again, it's Umboritka Campos he just aquaplaned out goes completely onto grass, he breaking but it's not doing anything and it was a huge crash and it is racing the barriers and let's see what happened to Ignacio Martin he just braked way too late and yeah he just lost his front wing not the whole wheel but with, but it meant he had absolutely no grip and hit the wall again and facing upside down and yeah, they both out of the race with these huge crashes. 
Lucas Luna is off the track again from Sagan Militia and Campus approaching him in the Belagat Muno trying to rejoin Omori Sanchez. This could be second position, yes, but he's really careful to not make any huge mistakes, but he's in second place. And Murno again, this time into Cops. It was such a promising race at first because he, will, he was leading the whole first part of the race, but it became a disaster with the slick tire. And meanwhile, Joe Gilletters moves up into fourth place because Muno tried to make another pit stop to get rid of the, the slick tires. But let's see what happened because it was such an interesting scene. Oh, he just couldn't stop in his box and went straight on and couldn't reverse back. Ay, ay, ay. We are a lap to return going on with Mingu and someone is off the circuit in the trajectory. Sanchez on second position. The soft tires are also not working. The track is still very wet because if you go off the racing line just a little bit, it's so insanely wet off the racing line that you cannot do anything about it. But it still somehow is in second place. So let's see what happened into turn one. He just went off the line just a little bit and he bounced onto the curb and it sent him into the wall. He was just off the line a little bit, but it was enough to ruin his race. And Chogret is now really close to Mar Sanchez and he spins off again facing the wrong way. And Gilat is somehow is back on the podium place after his mistake earlier on. And oh no, not again! He's in the gravel, Sanchez, it looked such promising at the middle part of the race on the intermediates, but now he will lose the fourth position to Lucas Murno. And this man approaches the last corner, he made no mistakes, made the right strategy, and Michel Urasio of Vincent Silverstone is the new race winner in the G4 League history. He was not the fastest, but he made no mistakes and was covered with the strategy. Mingu still comes in second position. He also made the right call with the intermediate tires. And Joe Gatti is still in third position somehow after the early mistake with the six tires, but he recovered it very nicely afterwards. So let's look at the race results from the British Grand Prix. Michel Urasio gets his first win in Silverstone. It's a brilliant race from him. Mingu is in second place. He will be happy with that. I think Joe Gillette is in third. And Lucas Moura and Sanchez are two big losers with the slick tires and don't forget Ignacio Martin and Campos who crashed out and also the three disqualifications at the early part as well. Let's look at the standings right now. Sanchez extends his lead over Alexander Macho because he couldn't race today but Joe Gillette uh, maintains third position. Urasio uh, climbs back up all the way to P8 with the race victory. And now let's look at the constructor standings. Dimitar extends the lead over Fracto 21 because of the double podium and the Campos DNF. Rebel Racing scored very few points with Lucas Muno only P4 